Now, for stars like our Sun, the collapse continues until it produces a new and exotic type of star. In the yawning expanse that is our universe, scientists have, once again, unveiled a cosmic wonder that will reshape our understanding of the universe and alter how we see the cosmos. Deep within the infinite stellar clusters, something amazing resides. Yes, they are stars, or have been labeled stars, but these are not your average stars. These are huge celestial bodies known as supermassive stars. Once again, James Webb Space Telescope plays a massive role in discovering one of the biggest modern scientific wonders. What makes these new stellar bodies so interesting? How does their discovery change the way we view the cosmos? Join us in this video as we unravel this black hole and figure out what the discovery of these 45,000 galaxies by the James Webb Telescope entails. According to the standard model of cosmology, after the universe was birthed in the Big Bang, it took between 500 million to 1 billion years for the first star to form. That belief, however, is changing. James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cards all of a sudden, and it is possible that all the textbooks on cosmology and astrophysics may have to be rewritten because the long-standing take on how the universe was formed may not be entirely accurate. It takes several billion years to create a galaxy, we must understand that galaxies form simultaneously, even though some mature before others. For example, the Milky Way, our galaxy, has about 100 million stars, many of which are several billion years old. James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies, each about 500 million years old, that are about 10 times larger than the Milky Way. The issue with this is that it is supposed to be different. Now, we are not only finding singular stars, but clusters of them in the early universe, which leaves the science community in confusion. The star clusters in question are called globular clusters. These globular clusters are ancient celestial enclaves born approximately 13.4 billion years ago. They are the biggest and oldest of stellar groupings and possess peculiar characteristics that set them apart from other star clusters. These globular clusters also possess compositional variation that sets them apart. Picture this, several stars are born together. They form side by side as they emerge from the cosmic womb of collapsing gas and dust. And yet despite their shared origin, they exhibit obvious differences in the abundance of elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, sodium, and aluminum. This variation can be explained as the abundance anomaly. The abundance anomaly is an enigma that has perplexed astronomers and astrophysicists for years, challenging their attempts to decipher the cosmic puzzle. We may need to revise the theory of the creation of the universe. Some scientists believe that these were not just new or infant galaxies. They believe that what they found were giant black holes that formed shortly after the instance of creation. What is most baffling about these black holes is that they do not fit into any context or the normal sequence of the birth of a galaxy. The conclusion is that these monster black holes that James Webb Telescope recently discovered represent new laws of physics that are now emerging it's possible that whoever can tie up these new ends in a way we can all understand has a Nobel Prize waiting for them in the future. The research team that came upon this discovery went on a quest to find signs of the supermassive star clusters. They pointed James Webb Telescope into the cosmos for a red vision, seeking to glimpse these massive globular clusters in their nascent state. Through the telescope's remarkable capabilities, they peer into the cosmos's far reaches and find what they call GNZ-11. GNZ-11 is one of the oldest and most distant galaxies that humankind has discovered so far. The GNZ-11 is located a staggering 13.3 billion light-years away. James Webb Space Telescope captured the galaxy in its infancy when it was only a mere tens of million years old. At that age, the GNZ-11 was an ideal hunting ground for young globular clusters. It is the distinct nature of light that guides their investigation. The chemical elements possess unique absorption and emission patterns, leaving behind fingerprints that reveal these celestial objects' makeup. Astronomers who have been researching the GNZ-11 meticulously break down the light emanating from GNZ-11 and get nothing but vital pieces of information that propel their quest forward. According to astronomy professor Daniel Shara, a distinguished member of the team studying the GNZ-11, it has been determined that the GNZ-11 contains high proportions of nitrogen and an abundance of stars. 
These findings suggest the birth of multiple globular clusters within the ancient galaxy and the presence of active supermassive stars within the globular clusters. With the aid of James Webb Telescope, scientists will extend their gaze to distant galaxies, exploring more globular clusters and seeking patterns that affirm their theories. With each breathtaking revelation we make, the heavens compel us to delve further into its infinite expanse and unravel the mysteries concealed within its cosmic web. Pursuing knowledge of outer space, hunting for life outside Earth, and exploring various celestial worlds and moons hardly assuage our thirst for more. The more we find out, the more we reach, the stronger our thirst to know more. Our insatiable curiosity about the heavens propels us toward an uncertain yet tantalizing future. As humanity steps out into the unknown, armed with nothing but the knowledge we have gleaned and a need to know more, we are perpetually humbled by the cosmos's magnitude, delicacy, beauty, and complexity. With each tentative step that leads us closer to unraveling the secrets hidden amongst the stars, it is only a matter of time before we truly become one with the cosmos. Published in astronomy and astrophysics journals, the researchers claim to have found the first chemical trace of supermassive stars in globular proto-clusters about 440 million years after the Big Bang. The supermassive stars in question are extraordinarily large. They're about 5,000 to 10,000 times more massive and five times hotter at their center than the Sun. Finding traces of such stars is complicated because supermassive stars burn fast and die young, unlike globular clusters. Globular clusters are between 10 and 13 billion years old, whereas the maximum lifespan of superstars is 2 million years, said Mark Giles, ICREA professor at the University of Barcelona and co-author of the study. They therefore disappeared very early from the currently observable clusters. Only indirect traces remain. Q. James Webb's images of one of the youngest and most distant galaxies known to date in our universe, GNZ 11, first identified in 2016 by Hubble and the Keck Observatory, a few tens of millions of years old. Its light shows very high levels of nitrogen, which, say the authors, can only be explained by hydrogen combustion at extremely high temperatures. GNZ 11 also contains a very high density of stars. This suggests that globular clusters are forming inside while a supermassive star still exists, claim the authors. It's a tantalizing clue as to the origin of these clumps of ancient stars. The authors will continue to use James Webb Telescope to study globular clusters in distant galaxies to confirm their theory. Using the James Webb Telescope, astronomers have discovered evidence of complex organic molecules in a distant galaxy, similar to smoke or smog. This is the oldest known example of complex organic molecules in the universe found by humans. This discovery has pushed back the old record for similar detections by about a billion years. These chemicals have been detected within an earlier formed galaxy. This galaxy formed when the universe was barely a tenth of its current age. The carbon-based molecules, technically known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, are found in Earth's oil and coal deposits and smog. What, then, is the significance of this finding? Justin Spilker, the lead astronomer of the study, makes us understand that the molecules we found aren't simple molecules such as water or carbon dioxide. These molecules, discovered in these distant galaxies, are so much more complex, with dozens or even hundreds of atoms constituting their makeup. We should find it remarkable that the universe could make such large and complex molecules so shortly after its birth when our models state that it shouldn't have been able to accomplish that, at least not at that age. Given the extreme distance of the galaxy and the light detected from it by the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers believe the galaxy began its journey about 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. The universe is nearly 14 billion years old now. We are looking at the beginning of the formation of the universe we see today. However, there is a catch. Because of the James Webb Telescope, we have detected these complex organic molecules, which have pushed back our records by a significant amount of time. Imagine if it were possible for us to look further into the past. Is it not possible that we would find more of these types of complex molecules created at even earlier periods? What would that do to science? Our cosmological models would be in tatters. Here is the thing. Previous efforts to detect complex molecules in older galaxies were not done with tools as sophisticated as the James Webb Telescope, and therefore could not pick up on these extremities. Hence, we could not say if these chemicals were there. 
With James Webb Telescope's high-resolution capabilities, we can see with actual detail where within a galaxy these molecules are located. In this early galaxy dubbed the SPT041847, the presence of these molecules is not uniform. The reason for this anomaly cannot be explained, at least not yet. This discovery also proves that galaxies can form in the early universe where not much was thought to be happening. What is fascinating, however, is that the galaxy was already just as massive and its stars had fully formed, similar to our galaxy, the Milky Way, even though at the time it was only a tenth of the age the Milky Way is now. It is similar to a ten-year-old living a full life with all the major milestones achieved and ready for the afterlife at 14. Fascinating, right? This discovery has also rubbished another set of theories. Scientists previously believed that these complex organic molecules were linked to star formations. New data has disproved this belief. That is only sometimes the case. Spilker and his colleagues found many regions with these molecules but no star formation and others with new stars forming but none of the complex molecules. According to the standard model of cosmology, after the universe came out of the Big Bang, it took 500 million to 1 billion years for the first stars to form. That view is quickly changing, especially with these recent discoveries. We are finding more than single stars but clusters of them in the early universe, which has baffled the scientific community. Furthermore, James Webb Telescope opened the celestial Pandora's box. Abel 2744, commonly known as the Pandora's Cluster, was featured in a recent ultra-deep photograph from the Space Telescope. Astronomers could observe the emergence of a mega-cluster of galaxies in the image, which resulted from merging three enormous clusters by wrapping up the space-time fabric with its gravity. The mega-cluster's immense mass created a natural super-magnifying glass or gravitational lens. Albert Einstein originally described the phenomenon in his 1915 opus, the theory of gravity known as general relativity. This natural magnification enabled the detection of distant galaxies in the early cosmos, which would have been impossible. With the James Webb Space Telescope's initial view, the JWST captured the image with its near-chem instruments, which took six-hour exposures with a maximum observation time of 30 hours. Even at such a long exposure, the gravitational lens would not have been able to produce such a detailed image. Scientists were a little stunned when the image of the Pandora cluster first came in because the telescope's results far outweighed their expectations. The most recent image of the Pandora cluster combines four images from James Webb Telescope into a single panoramic image displaying over 50,000 stars near the red light sources. Pandora's cluster, as imaged by the JWST, showed a stronger, wider, deeper and better lens than ever seen. Many scientists' first reaction to the image was that it was stunning, like a simulation of galaxy formations, beautiful clusters that were not wider than our pinkies. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has shared a mesmerizing and never-before-seen picture showing more than 45,000 galaxies in one frame. The picture was of a portion of the sky known as Good's Sout. James Webb Space Telescope captured the image as part of the JWS Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES program. As per the Space Agency, around 32 days of the telescope time will be devoted to the JADES program to uncover and characterize distant and faint galaxies as astronomers try to understand how the first stars and galaxies were formed. Although data are still pouring in, hundreds of galaxies have already been discovered that existed when the universe had not completed 600 million years. Galaxies, which were sparkling along with several young hot stars, have also been identified by the team. Co-lead of the JADES program and professor at the University of Arizona, Marsha Riki said, With JADES, we want to answer many questions like, How did the earliest galaxies assemble themselves? How fast did they form stars? Why do some galaxies stop forming stars? The Hubble telescope previously observed part of the sky. There was also an investigation on galaxies that existed 500 to 850 million years after the Big Bang. Ryan Ensley, graduate student at the University of Texas and astronomy genius, headed the investigation into galaxies that existed 500 to 850 million years after the Big Bang. For hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with a gaseous fog that made it opaque to energetic light. By one billion years after the Big Bang, the fog had cleared and the universe became transparent, a process known as reionization, the space agency explained. 
it went further to inform us that scientists had a debate as to whether active supermassive black holes or galaxies full of hot young stars were the primary cause of reionization. The researchers found evidence of young galaxies going through rapid star formation interspersed with short periods where fewer stars formed. Almost every galaxy we find shows these unusually strong emission line signatures indicating intense recent star formation. These early galaxies were very good at creating hot, massive stars, stated Ryan Ensley of the University of Texas, who headed the investigation. The earliest galaxies scientists could pick up on looked like little smudges. And yet those smudges represent millions or billions of stars at the universe's beginning. Now we can see that some are extended objects with visible structures. We can see groupings of stars being born only a few hundred million years after the beginning of time, stated Kevin Hainline of the University of Arizona in a statement. We're finding star formation in the early universe is much more complicated than we thought, Rika stated. You would be amazed if you saw them too. The very early universe was far more chaotic in how it formed stars. Ensley's team studied the signs of star formation in those very early galaxies, which provided insight into how starlight ionized the gas within those galaxies. The team found that one in six galaxies at the time showed extreme line emissions in the galaxy spectra, a feature that atoms ionized by starlight radiate when they have cooled down and combined with other molecules. Those emission lines prove that early galaxies were actively birthing stars, which then pumped torrents of ultraviolet photons into their respective galaxies. This way, the universe's early stars became the main drivers of cosmic reionization. These extreme emission lines are relatively common in the very early universe, Endley said during his presentation. Almost every single galaxy that we are finding shows these unusually strong emission line signatures indicating intense recent star formation. These early galaxies were great at creating hot, massive stars, he concluded. From the same emission lines, Ensley's team also inferred that galaxies in the early universe birthed stars in short bursts, followed by quiescent periods. All of a sudden, you would have tens of suns worth of solar masses being assembled all at once in these early galaxies, Ensley told reporters at the news briefing held some weeks ago. That's important for our understanding of how reionization happened, because these hot, massive stars were very efficient producers of these ultraviolet photons that we needed to ionize all the hydrogen in the early universe, he added. And there we have it. Paradigm shifts in scientific beliefs and discoveries make old ones redundant. This is bound to happen as technology evolves and becomes more sophisticated. With the Hubble telescope, we could find only a few hundred galaxies created at least 500 million years after the Big Bang. James Webb Telescope, a far superior version of the Hubble Telescope, has come by to show us the same cosmos we have always peered at, but with a new lens. We have understood that there is so much we are yet to know about our universe. There is also so much that we have to unlearn to make room for the truths now coming to light. Change is the only constant thing in our ever-expanding universe, and we must learn to adapt and be willing to adjust. James Webb Telescope proves itself over and over again and exceeds all expectations the world of science ever had concerning it. Any space instrument built to continue from wherever James Webb Telescope stops has its work cut out. What do you think the discovery of these older galaxies means for the science world? Now that the standard cosmological model no longer stands, do you think the new model which would most likely be postulated will be more encompassing? Or do you feel we should not try to assume how the universe was made because it is a mystery we would never unravel? Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing space videos like this one.